The Lange Foundation was founded in 2002 by Miss Marianne Langen, then widow of Mr. Victor Langen, with whom she had put together this large collection consisting of three entities, 20th century European American art, non-European art and Japanese art. What brought Mrs. Marianne Langen to set up the Marianne Langen Foundation relatively late in her life? What was her objective with the foundation? I think Marianne Langen, unfortunately I never met her, was a very active and vital and obviously optimistic person because she decided at the age of 90 that she would um, have this museum built by Tadao Ando to be the largest artwork, as she said, uh, she ever bought in her life. And um, she, she immediately, when, the, when she saw the plans, had the idea that this should become her museum, where finally um, all the works that, that she and her husband had brought together throughout their lifetime um, should, um, should be seen and, and uh, be on view. And uh, yeah, she was very uh, enthusiastic about it and um, it was um, said that um, only shortly before um, the, the opening in 2004 she passed away, but uh, she was very active in the process throughout um, the whole time while uh, together with Ando the museum was conceived and was also actively taking part in the laying of the foundation stone. Ando was um, invited by uh, Karl Müller, who was uh, the initiator of the um, Insel Homo, to come up with um, a sketch for uh, a possible building. And um, he came there early in the 90s, and uh, his, um, his sketch was then also, or the, the um, structure for the whole um, Insel Homo was then also exhibited at. Um, architecture biennial in Venice and um, it was years later that um, actually Marianne Lange then was presented um, this, uh, this sketch and she fell in love with it and said this is fantastic I'm going to build this right. and to realize it. Right. So uh, then of course it, it was adopted to the collection and to, to her wishes but the original um, had sort of existed already. All right. They both uh, came from families uh, where, um, where art was collected and um, so to them I think it was a, a natural approach that they wanted to continue that, um, that uh, yeah, tradition and, but uh, in fact they were much more enthusiastic and, and, and really passionate about art than probably um, their families ever were because um, Victor Lang being, being an entrepreneur and, and also it was uh, his um, inventiveness because he was, a, he was an engineer who um, at, um, in, in the late 50s, early 60s, he um, invented a patent and it was a detail, a kind of valve, um, that from then on was built in every car that right. was worldwide constructed. So um, apparently that was something um, that not only um, made it possible for him to, to um, yeah, make acquisitions, but then also um, brought him in contact with um, Japan. Right. Because um, he then started very early on to travel to Japan because, of course, there was an um, increasing car industry in the 60s, and so um, he got very involved in the Japanese culture and was, was, uh, was very enthusiastic. So um, on his, all his business travels, he always combined with um, seeing shows uh, and, and uh, really getting more uh, in contact with um, Japanese culture. And um, finally, um, he and, and his wife, they brought together one of the largest um, collections of, pri of, of Japanese art. Um, it's about 350 objects they got together, and it's all historic objects from the 12th to the 19th century. And uh, interestingly, they would avoid any works that weren't unique. So there's nothing like wood um, oh, cuts right. and something in like that, or little right. gas, uh, is not in the. So they had a really a policy how to look at this, and it both took them very because they've been traveling, I think, all around the world and collecting from everywhere. But Japan was really a very it was special, special, special place. Yeah. They were particularly involved in and um, 
yeah, I mean, they, they uh, besides of the Japanese um, part of the collection, there's uh, more non-European art, as you said in the beginning, and uh, it was indeed their, yeah, their passion for, for traveling, and because they, they had, uh, I think, uh, it, it was uh, sort of going hand in hand, that they, they were um, uh, understanding their way of collecting as something to, um, how to understand the world. And at the same time, they would do huge travels and, and journeys all over the world. And it was a, a sort of similar um, um, strive that, that uh, they wanted to, to understand other cultures. And right. uh, I think that both got together. And right. I think they were very independent minds. And what, uh, what is, what is uh, I think, characteristic for the way they were collecting, really, is that um, they weren't... Um, you know, having experts around them to advise them, right. or they were very much um, trusting their own um, opinions and judgments, and um, and uh, yeah, they 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 really dealt, uh, learned a lot about the different cultures, and um, and then made up their mind. And so they were not involved in what was going on on the on the art market or what what. Right. They said they they really um, had their own approach to to the art and um, uh, and they didn't really care whether it was esteemed or not. They started um, collecting in the late forties and also from the fifties on they would be traveling all over the world together, look at exhibitions and and um, they went to to the U.S. and saw travel, uh, saw different um, private collections and then uh, of course did extensive journeys to India, uh, also South America and um, in those days it wasn't that comfortable as you know yeah. traveling is today and uh, also uh, with their with their journeys they were very yeah independently doing them they they didn't want to have uh, you know uh, someone to organize it for them but right. they they were very uh, individual in their um, yeah, preparation and, and choice of what they want to do. They both uh, started um, mainly to, to be interested in abstract art. This is really something they absolutely um, favored and, and they started with buying works from the Ecole de Louvre, but then very soon um, the Zero artists were to follow. And um, it was less actually that they were so close to um, to the artists that they were collecting works by. Um, I mean, they knew them, but it wasn't really... Uh, they, they don't belong to these collectors right. that sort of look right. for uh, a close yeah, relationship yeah. to the artist. Right. And in fact, um, they it's, it's maybe part of their independency that they um, didn't care so much yeah. about having a close relationship to them. Uh, with one exception maybe, which is uh, Dubuffet. And uh, Dubuffet was one of the artists who they met regularly. They were um, allowed to come to see him once a year and, and were invited by him to um, make one of the first choice from the works that he, uh, he had produced. Oh, right. And this is also um, how they became one of the largest um, Dubuffet collections um, worldwide. Right.